Over the years and across countless websites, someone has written strange, rambling comments reviewing a key lime pie from a restaurant that's been closed for over a decade. No one knows the purpose behind these comments and the identity of the poster remains unknown. Today we take a look at the bizarre mystery that is Captain Coochie's Key Lime Pies. This is Red Web. It's another Mystery Monday! Uh, I'm your host, Trevor Collins. With me, as always, Alfredo Diaz. We got uh, just a goofy one today. Uh, what? <laughs> like, that's a joke, right? We're talking about some key lime pies. No, this isn't no joke. What do you... All right, so it's some, <laughs> the place that closed... Okay, like, so this person wrote reviews for this key lime pie. <laughs> the place closed down, and the person is continuing to write reviews for the pie. Yeah. This is our episode. Bingo, bango. What? Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> so we're heading back into the internet, and this this is one that's been around for a few years now, and uh, it's nothing nefarious, nothing sinister here, maybe. But it is still a mystery to be solved, and and we'll it gets kind of cryptic in there, and we'll try to uh, stitch it all together in the theories as always. But it's definitely a strange one, and a little bit of a departure from our normal mo, our normal kind of mystery framework. Okay, <laughs> it's just so, so, it just sounds so weird to me. People haven't heard the false starts that I've given you before, and this very much sounds like one, like a hook that I just made up on the spot. Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> but, this be... but this is it this is... <laughs> okay it's definitely strange All right. uh there's a lot of details here so i'll try to get lost in the weeds or whatever because otherwise it's a pretty straightforward one that i just thought would be interesting to discuss hey i mean if you're bringing it up i'm sure there's something interesting about it so i'm, I'm very curious to find out <laughs> what is happening here yeah. What is beyond the review? Yeah, hundred percent. So we're, we'll dive into now. Typically, we go into the timeline and everything, and we break things down in the investigation. This is definitely an internet centric one. We're going to talk about the meat and potatoes coming out of these comments. What's going on there? And then we'll talk about how the redditors, typically redditors, but internet users abroad, have tried to dissect this. It just gets weirder as you go. Uh, so I'll, I'll be excited to hear your reaction. But the comments, all of these comments, tend to revolve around the poster's love for Captain Coochie's world-famous key lime pie from a restaurant that doesn't really seem to obviously exist at the time of being first found. Now, the commenter is typically referred to as the KLP poster, or simply KLP, obviously an acronym for key lime pie, but we'll keep it simple. It's whoever it is, whatever group they are, whatever individual it is, that's how we're going to refer to them as. Now, the poster would also mention within these otherwise key lime pie focused comments, they would talk about these, quote, goody goody cheeseburgers, the original cheeseburgers in paradise. <laughs> Bro, if I swear. Did I write this? I swear if this was in April, like, I swear this would be a bait and switch. But it's it's June. Okay, uh, let me t let me make it more serious then. All Another right. common uh, comment or term used in these was piegasms. Oh come on, is it serious for you yet? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm sure this is like. All right, I mean, I'm ninety percent sure this is real, and you're not messing with me. So uh, <laughs> my gut instinct is just like, all right, I'm along for the ride and this is going to be fun. <laughs> yeah, no, it's like I said, it's a goofy one, um, and it, but it's just I guess it's intriguing. <laughs> they don't all have to be about, you know, how uh, people are dying or disappearing or ending up on the roof of a Wendy's with their slacks in the tree three blocks down the road. But Mo most definitely. <laughs> but I have a feeling that this would probably be like one of the goofiest ones that we ever do oh, in probably. our entire like. You know, run of the show. Oh, probably for sure. What was the name of the burgers again? Goody Goody Cheeseburgers. Yeah. yeah the original <laughs> cheeseburgers in paradise. <laughs> I think they're just calling them good. Like th these are good, but they're goody goody. Goody goody. All right. <laughs> Continue, please. Yeah. Let's see if we can like almost take their comments to create some sort of police sketch identity of whoever this person is. But the comments tend to be very long, very verbose, rambling about pies and their origin and what have you. But the most commonly accepted restaurant in reference to where these pies come from is Captain Coochie's Key West Bar and Grill, 
also referred to as Captain Coochie's Key West Cafe. I'll kind of use those interchangeably, but they refer essentially to the same mysterious place. Though it is theorized that this location could have gone through several name changes, it really starts to get hard to dissect, especially when you start to see how these comments evolve and get weirder. And then they start talking about Coochie's Cafe and Coocheritaville. It gets strange. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. All right, we're in the deep end now. Oh, we've we've barely scratched the surface. <laughs> now what's weird is that these comments tend to be found on blog posts, recipe websites, movie reviews, news articles, a, a wide array of destinations that you can find on the internet, sometimes even on obituaries. They just don't belong in a lot of places, but whoever is behind this KLP poster kind of pseudonym or what have you, they have accounts for all sorts of websites. They're very prolific, including, okay, so let's see, they've got Google+, Facebook, Fan Fiction, IMDB, a lot of other websites. They even have an account for Discus. If you're not familiar with that, D-I-S-Q-U-S, it's essentially a service that allows you to have comments on your blog and have one account, whatever. There's a Discus account that was supposedly attached to this mystery that has uh, since been deleted and it had 1,400 messages under that account's tenure. So clearly there's a lot of comments being left in the weirdest places around the internet talking about this pie. Yeah, this person's a person. Right. Or some elaborate prank. Right. A lot of effort put into it. Yep, yep, yep. It's definitely a consistent person because there's a lot of recognizable speech patterns, styles, manner of speaking, etc. I mean, you know, clearly you could fake this sort of thing or a lot of people can imitate, but yeah. there's something behind this. Or, or that or it's like an early, one of my theories is, before we even get way into it, is that this is maybe an early version of like a bot that can write articles. Like nowadays, if you search on Google or wherever and you look at the news tab, a lot of these articles are written by bots. They're just Mad Lib style, fill in the word. Ooh. The rest of the article is just cut and paste kind of thing. And they're just based on like, I don't know. I see a lot in finance where it'll just grab random statistics, shove it all into a pre-baked article, and then it posts it. And then you're like, okay, yeah, there's an article. This could be like an early iteration of that for some reason. I don't know. Now, with regards to this recognizable speech pattern and style of speaking, uh, a lot of people compare this to spam because it has very much... It's, I don't know, like the grammar isn't super tight and it's also very random. So it does feel a bit like it's word vomit jumbled up created by a bot some comments go from very coherent others go to a little less coherent and there's everything in between some are even like total nonsense uh so even if you read the comments that make sense you're just like why are you talking about pies on this movie review <laughs> meanwhile somewhere else uh you know you're reading your grandpa's obituary and someone's commenting about Kucharitaville. And, and tales from the pylons. I, I don't know. Is this, per is this person trying to get someone down a rabbit hole? Um, I don't know. Like, is it like a dark web type thing? Like, my, like, Ooh. why jump over to different topics that has nothing to do right. with this place or the pie and start talking about it if you weren't a troll? Right. Maybe they're casting a wide net to say like, Mm -hmm. You know, look a little deeper yeah. and then come to my dark website and uh, right. order a pie. Oh, hey, free thinker, come down this <laughs> rabbit hole. <laughs> right. That or some sort of very strange guerrilla marketing tactic for, once again, a restaurant that doesn't exist anymore. Yep. But yeah, another thing of note is that the KLP poster often references older pop culture icons and political figures claiming that they also loved the pies. Some names that they claim loved these key lime pies were Jimmy Carson, Steve Martin, George Bush, and Christy Brinkley. These names are also often misspelled for whatever reason, but it is a common trend. And whoever is leaving these comments seems to have an inside knowledge regarding the restaurant's history and the staff and whatnot. And all of this combined tells me that whoever this is is probably older in age because as you'll come to find out here soon, this restaurant did exist. If, if, we're, if we have identified the correct restaurant, it has since closed and their vivid knowledge, like I said, of this restaurant's history would definitely portray somebody who was a bit older at the time of going there. And so this person's probably a little bit older in age also, hence their pop culture references and whatnot. But they often mention the owner of the restaurant 
Captain Oswald Peleas and his gorgeous wife, Anita. I say gorgeous with emphasis because he tends to mm. leave a lot of comments regarding how beautiful Anita is. They've named, I say yeah. he, whoever they are, right. uh, they even named their three children. So clearly there's an intimate knowledge of this restaurant and the, the owner and the family. They also even described the kind of music that was played at the restaurant, the type of patrons who would regularly visit, and the KLP poster has claimed that this restaurant, whatever it was, wherever it was, was five minutes from the Biltmore House in Asheville, North Carolina. So boom, instantly we have a location, we yeah. have a proximity from another location, so we can try to figure out where this restaurant was. And the poster was saying that this restaurant had a 35 year history, so we can really start to try to fact check all this. Right, okay, so I like that. It's, you know, with these, with these shows, I talk about this a lot, but with, you know, with the, sh the show that we do, there's a lot of times where we just kind of have to go, that's just what was said and we have to take it at that. Right. So this place most likely exists. I mean, like 30 years, there's gotta be records upon paper trails and virtual trails. Like, you know, there's like building permits and business permits and all that kind of stuff. I mean, so this, this place exists. Right. Okay. And that's, you know, it definitely does exist. We'll dive into the details because right now we're covering kind of the DNA of the comments that they leave and how mm -hmm. they've changed over time. But yeah, we'll dive into the details, pulling this all apart and diving into the facts uh, in just a moment in our quote unquote investigation section. Not a typical investigation per se, but definitely some interesting stuff to dive into there. Right. I think one of the things that kind of like uh, sparks a thought in my mind is um, it, it could have very easily have been, oh, this is a person that just randomly took this restaurant that closed down a while ago and used that as their alias, mm. Wh which still could be the, you know, the case here. But I mean, the place actually exists. Right. And there's a lot of discussion about. There's a lot of intimate details that I'm getting. Right. So I'm not, I don't know. There's some kind of weird book about it or whatnot. But like my mind's my mind's going now, and I'm I'm intrigued. Yeah. And again, we'll, we'll dive into some more details on timelines and whatnot. But what's interesting at this juncture is not necessarily just what they're saying and the the knowledge that they have, but how long they've been saying it and how long these comments have kind of gone on. It starts to do that thing where you're like, okay, this started out as what feels like obviously a, a prank or a jest or whatever, right? You mentioned someone who might have just grown up near this place and knew it and knew what it was called. And so they, eh, that's my handle now. Mm -hmm. But why would they keep going on and on with these essay long length comments that kind of just go off the rails? But diving back to the comments, we'll circle back around here in a minute. These comments were left on, like I said, many strange websites that were essentially non sequitur, not relative to what was being discussed in these comments, not these pies or whatever, not always anyway. But they would also sometimes return to the same websites and leave yet another unique comment, sometimes months or even years after the initial one. So to me, that then starts to say, okay, is there a database of websites? I'm thinking from the bot angle, like a coded language. Is there a table of websites that this bot just comments on and doesn't think about it? It's just strange that they're returning to certain blogs because a lot of these blogs are not necessarily huge blogs. They're just random people posting their recipes online, right? Yeah. So we can start to build a pattern here on their behaviors. It's a lot of dedication if it's a trolley thing. Mm -hmm. At the end of their comments, they would typically sign off using a name that was sort of a reference to something. For example, there was Vinny Gambini, who was a reference to my cousin Vinny. And these names would also be typos or misspelled often. But a couple of the common names that they used, and this is how people were able to more easily verify who was leaving these comments. A couple common names were like Jake Carson, Willie Jordan, and Roger Ramjet. What's more interesting on top of that is that each of these names seem to have their own writing style. I won't dive into just like the exact phrasings that they used. I, I'll try to generalize. Uh, under the name Jake Carson, they seem to use a more copy-paste style. The comments seem to mirror themselves a little bit more compared to the next Jake Carson comment. Uh, Willie Jordan, when that was signed on there, it would tend to include a little bit more sexual innuendos, and it would often reply to the context of the website that they were on. So if they were replying to a random movie or a random recipe or what have you, it would include some of that language in the comment itself. Okay. So it was a little bit more self-aware. Again, it's, it's a very odd thing that sexual innuendos keep getting placed in these comments and they're increasing with frequency as time goes on. This is weird. Very. 
This is weird. I ought to be like, this is just a weird person on the internet. Yeah, I'm sure it is. <laughs> but oddly enough, when it comes to the signature Roger Ramjet, this seemed to be the most non sequitur. It tended to not relate to whatever the KLP poster usually commented on. And so this was the most out of the box sort of commenter. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so this could indicate that there are a handful of different people uh, within the confines of the KLP poster pseudonym. Their writing style was similar, it's that their subject matter and use of language, or uh, topics, would subtly shift. Uh, but the writing style was all very similar. It's it's like, um, you know, like back in the day when there would be like, uh, notes that are left or whatnot, you can analyze someone's handwriting, mm -hmm. people have certain ways that they write their letters, or how they portray what they're trying to say. Same thing goes for digital, right? I mean, obviously you can't see the you know, the way the E is curved, whatever, because it's just, it's typed. But people talk in different ways, even digitally, so. Yeah, that's true. This leads me down that whole, like, dark web, maybe cultish type thing. Yeah, I think the last time we really dove into writing style was actually way, way, way back when we did Lake City Quiet Pills, because these people were all super anonymous, posting behind the scenes of a website and had code names essentially yeah, and so damn. the only way to pull anything out was to say like are they talking similarly to anyone else can we had really expensive hotel parties <laughs> yeah uh barely sociable who's a, is a youtuber who does uh mysteries like this as well so shout out to them um i, I you know they have done a lot of research and whatnot but i want to give them uh, credit to this because they, in their uh, research on this topic, referred to the fact that some people did actually try to combine this mystery with Lake City Quiet Pills. He didn't oh. say much on the topic, but it was interesting that that was, uh, that's kind of out there. But this is also one of those mysteries that's just so open-ended and, and kind of so vague mm -hmm. that a lot of people could really try to attribute a lot of, uh, relation to other mysteries. Yeah, I, I would need something a lot more concrete to tie it to, like, uh, Lake City Quiet Pills. Oh, Hundo P. Um, but yeah, I, I could see the want there, you know, and then just looking for any sign. Mm hmm. Well, as you can imagine, when it comes to these comments and Reddit finding out about this enigma, uh, it seemed like a lot of copycats started to appear because it was very easy to copycat, right? It was the, the writing styles right there. Yep. Uh, a lot of people started to say, okay, well, to distinguish between an authentic post and a copycat, the rule of thumb was check whether or not the post had the aforementioned signature, right? But that's, again, it's it's text. You could just type in whatever name. Mm -hmm. And so really what people landed on yep. was, they said, okay, the last universally agreed upon legitimate last comment from KLP was somewhere in 2016, because that is kind of where the rise of popularity came in, the rise of obvious copycats came in. And so the, the internet kind of universally agreed upon one comment. Yeah, uh, this, yeah, I shouldn't be surprised at this point. Right. <laughs> Everyone just wants to get involved. Everyone yep. wants, to, wants to be, I don't know, famous, even if it means they're saying that they did the crime and they didn't. Yep. Or maybe they just want website traffic. I don't know. They're like, here's my GeoCities. Look, you, you got me. The KLP poster, guys. <laughs> but this is where validity goes out the window. It's just, it becomes very difficult to figure out which is a, uh, a real comment and which is a copycat. Just someone inspired by whatever's going on here. But with all that said, that's the kind of, I wanted to lay the groundwork for what kind of the DNA of these comments looked like, uh, because now I want to dive into the facts, the dates, the names, everything like that, and internet users in particular who attempted to pull this apart to find some story, some narrative underneath. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that was a solid foundation. A lot of, a lot of good details there. Yeah. Well, the first person to kind of discover, I use air quotes here, but discover this phenomenon was Reddit user KeyLimeWTF. Uh, they were on the subreddit Unresolved Mysteries. Fantastic place if you're ever curious and just want to read some small mysteries. But they found the KLP poster in the comments section for their local college newspaper under the most read article. So a very strange place to see something so peculiar show up. The article is unfortunately no longer available, but it was sexual in nature. And let's just leave it at that. Uh, you're going to identify very quickly um, that there is a formula behind the articles and blogs and websites that have comments from the KLP poster. There tends to be a very strong relationship between the subject matter in the comments themselves and the subject matter of the titles of the websites themselves. And so I think 
that's why my brain keeps leaning towards maybe a bot or some sort of yeah. bot that crawls the websites like a search engine and then dumps a bunch of information on it for, for whatever purpose. At this point, there's no like, I don't know, there was no uh, nothing to decipher to lead you to a separate site or anything. It's just these weird posts. Just weird posts. Uh, this person found it. He's like, what the heck is this person talking about? Creates this throwaway account and that brought it to the attention of other online sleuths who were able to track down using the language they're in. Mm -hmm. They were like, okay, well, I found, I say I, the collective internet saying, we found countless comments that are all stemming from what seems to be the same person, this KLP poster. And that's really where this mystery got traction, was someone saying, hey, this is a strange comment. Does anyone know about this? Why is this here? I would have just been like, this is goofy and moved like, on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, but they sparked something. Weird. And then go about my day. Yep. And so they found years worth of comments of a similar nature. Now, when the mystery was first discovered, as I kind of ambiguously referred to earlier when we talked about this, it was unknown if the restaurant was real or not. But Reddit user jstrange888 shared archived Google Maps images of the restaurant in the subreddit for Asheville. This is the subreddit for the city, Asheville, North Carolina, that we've referred to earlier, uh, that was in some of the comments uh, left by the KLP poster, and is likely the location for this restaurant, okay. if it were to exist. And it turns out at one point in time, there was a restaurant in this city called Coochie's Key West Bar and Grill. It did in fact exist. It was owned and operated by someone named Captain Oswald Peleas Jr. and his wife Anita. What's noteworthy here is that Oswald's nickname is Coochie. Don't know exactly why, oh, but it okay. is. <laughs> so bingo bango, we've got our guy. So we have real people now in a real restaurant identified. Is it that simple, though? Well, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, it's 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 awesome that we have a place. Yeah. But again, who, why, and what for <laughs> are you leaving these comments? The restaurant was likely founded by Oswald's father, Oswald Sr., back in 1978. So this place has been around for quite some time. Mm -hmm. Oswald Sr. originally comes from Florida, and that's probably why it has a Key West theme to the restaurant. The restaurant was eventually bought out by an all-star sports bar and grill, and this was around either 2005 or 2006. But that restaurant was ultimately closed down in 2008. This is where the comments kind of kicked off. The first comment that mentions Captain Coochie's Key Lime Pies is from October of 2009, long after the closing of the original restaurant and a year after the replacement restaurant even closed. So questionable amount of time there. Yeah. Very odd, but I guess that fits the MO here. This comment was left on a fast food review blog called So Good Blog, and it was from a user called Jimmy Buffett. <laughs> so again, that fits the yep. established MO for, for these comments. I want to read this for you. I know it's, it's weird. All right, here we go. The, the comment simply reads, quote, these cheeseburgers are better than sex. Where I tell you, Coochie's Key West Bar and Grill Asheville, North Carolina. And that's it. Oh, oh, huh. that was short. Bingo, bango. Very short. And sex. Again, oddly sexual. Uh, but outside this comment, the first comment that featured that signature KLP poster style was from a comment on a restaurant review site called Foodio54. This comment was created two months later in December of 2009. So regardless of which one is the authentic original one, we can we can identify the end of 2009 as being the origin for many years worth of key lime pie commentary. <laughs> like thousands of comments over several years. That's so many. Oh yeah. It's like the longest, most meaningless prank ever. It's Someone took a lot of time. the phrase, get a hobby to a whole new level. I mean, <laughs> the one that you read was very short, so. Very short. A thousand doesn't doesn't seem as. I got some long ones. Oh, okay. We'll, we'll dive in. I don't know if I'm gonna read. I have, a, I have a link though, a paste bin link that has just a bunch of the kind of copy paste sort of cookie cutter comments that they tended to start using. Or majority like short or I mean like, you know, what was the median? Uh, maybe like a like a paragraph or two, I guess. That's not bad. 
What, what would you say, Christian, on the length of some of these? It, it's kind of hard to say. Uh, they're long for internet comments, certainly. Yeah, I would say, I think what you said, a paragraph or two around there. Yeah, they, they range. There's something like that. But um, that's kind of like the average. But, you know, people were able to, now that we had factual, like, okay, this is when the comments started. This is the restaurant. This is who started, whatever. Based on archived Asheville newspapers, people could start looking into this. And these newspapers came from the 80s and 90s. And they're looking at Coochie's Key West Cafe, and, and they noticed that the, the restaurant tended to focus on seafood. In fact, these goody-goody burgers that uh, were referenced in one of the early comments. Is it like seafood burgers? I, I don't know, because burgers and key lime pie are rarely mentioned when you look back at this actual restaurant. <laughs> um, so now okay. it's like even stranger. Yeah, because of the restaurant doesn't even sell these things. Right. That's like, I love McDonald's. Key lime pie! <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then talking about it a lot. Uh, all right, I, I'll, I'll be... Also, I'll, Donnie's, Donatello's. Get on it, man. I want some pocket key lime pies. Anyway. I'll be honest. That was a, that was a <laughs> twist I didn't expect to hear. I mean, are, really, though? I mean, I, oddly enough... It's red web, my friend. The yarn is everywhere. Oddly enough... I thought that was the only thing that would make sense. It's just like, okay, what they're talking about is from this restaurant that exists. Okay. Oh, what they're talking about isn't from the restaurant <laughs> that exists. So, th okay, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just swallowed my tongue. The fact, <laughs> the fact that he's talking about, or they, are talking about a restaurant that did factually exist. And for a long time, with a lot of detail, you're like, okay, all right, we're getting somewhere. But this restaurant had nothing to do with the burgers and key lime pie that they are so obsessed over. Very strange. Now, based on a few things, uh, it is theorized that whoever is behind this posting of comments is believed to have primarily visited this restaurant in the 90s and in the early 2000s, sometime obviously before it closed. This theory is based entirely off of the food served and the choice of pop culture references that they used in their comments. Something interesting, too, is that the poster tended to comment about a lizard. They mentioned a lizard multiple times in the restaurant and throughout many comments. And looking back at these old newspaper articles and ads, it does appear that there was, in fact, a lizard that was used as a mascot at some point in time. So, again, the cherry picking of reality and falsities is confusing. <sighs> this, it, it bombs and weaves. Yeah, it's bobbing and weaving. So it's all right. I mean, th th hmm. I mean, granted, the internet, you could find so many things on the on the internet, but it just really seems like this is a person that grew up with this place, like we were discussing earlier. Uh huh. Just chose to pick, you know, pluck a bunch of details. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I could do that too, you know, like. Right. Just a place that you're familiar with as a kid. Just pull on a few strings and then make up one specific thing and obsess over the thing you made up. And then just hope. I mean, it's like fishing. I'm sure there's a billion lines out in the in the water right now. This just happened to snag a poor college student that was like, what is going on? <laughs> yeah, what is happening? And, and man, they are reeling us in. But back to Reddit. There was a Reddit user named Mark Dungo 333 and they made a post entitled An In-Depth Look at Coochie's Key Lime Pies. This user actually tracked the frequency of comments made over time. They made a, a really nice graph so you could see almost like a heat map uh, on a time scale of when they would typically post. They identified the statistic that they never left more than 10 comments in one day. And overall, they, they counted about a thousand comments from many, like I said, blogs and recipes and review sites. This doesn't count the hypothetical, the potential 1400 comments left uh, from that deleted Discus account. But again, I don't know if that's verified to be the same person or not. It's theorized. Right, yeah. There's, I mean, I would I would think that at some point people are like, okay, because um, then, you know, the internet's jumping on this whole mystery. So a lot of people are just trying to decipher what's real, what's not real. And then the people that are writing the fake stuff are going, okay, what are people deciphering that's real and not real? What are like the key markers that make it real? I'm going to add that. And so it just kind of muddies the waters even more. Right. Man, it's just... The, the biggest question throughout this whole thing is like, what is this for? What is the end goal? And I don't know, maybe maybe the more we look at it, the more we might be able to identify something. For example, the topics that I was talking about before, 
The comments tend to focus on obviously key lime pies and burgers and whatnot, but there's other topics within that that they tend to talk about. These are also topics that they tend to comment on. So if there's a review site or a blog that uses these topics, odds are the KLP poster might show up. I don't know if that's common now. I think that kind of, the official accounts seem to have ended in 2016. I don't know, but let's talk about some of those topics. We have Kuchi, Kuch and Kuchery Deville, obviously. Uh, Florida Keys, Key West. We have the idea of goody goody. Uh, such as the cheeseburgers, Sharks, Biltmore House, Hemingway, Reggae, Urban Legends, Net Worth, and Market Value, Size Matters, uh, the idea of better than sex, uh, modeling, and politics. These are, these are common phrases, but again, common topics that they uh, comment on and reply to. Just, just seems random. Just, I, have, I can't pinpoint this. It's so, it's so, I can't either. It's so slippery. I can't quite I I'm, can't understand. I'm like, I'm, I've got my mental map going. You know, we call the podcast Red Web because of all the red string that you would put up on the cork board as you're trying to figure out the crime or whatever. Mm -hmm. My Red Web is all over the place because I'm, I'm stitching topics together that don't belong together. It's, it's just a mess and I can't yeah. track it. Maybe that's by design. Well, well, my board, you know, there's a whole bunch of questions on the right and then there's a big <laughs> what? on the left and all the strings are pointing to that. <laughs> yep. Yep. Now I want to read one of the comments as I was kind of hinting at before, but this is a perfect example of the comments that were left in the early days, uh, somewhere between 2009 and 2010. A lot of the comments simply were eccentric reviews for key lime pie, often found on relevant websites, food sites, usually key lime pie recipes, what have you. Now, this example is from 2009, and it was a comment on a review of Cub Foods Supermarket's Key Lime Pie. So this person's putting up the, the, the fist and they're saying, Let, let's fight. My Key Lime Pie is better than any Key Lime Pie out there. And here's the comment. Apparently no one has ever tried the world's greatest Key Lime Pie from Coochie's Key West. That's so sad. Coochie's KLP have been available for over 30 years now. We travel over 500 miles to get to them about four times a year. Coochie's is located just south of Asheville in North Carolina. We usually bring back about a hundred of these fantastic pies. Most of our friends and neighbors have us pick up their pies while we are there. We phone Coochie's about two weeks in advance to be sure that the pies will be ready. <laughs> it's that easy. There is no excuse for anyone not eating the best, and that is Coochie's famous key lime pie. Now you know. Dot, 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 dot. Christy Brinkley. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> It, it, I, yeah, I'm speechless. I mean, like that, that's just, I mean, mm. that's where it starts. It all starts with some antagonistic comments on key lime pie recipes and other food websites. Yep. And then it just goes off the rails going to IMDB movie reviews. It's, and like I said, just, uh, it's just spilling into everything everywhere. So it's like a bot that is trying to advertise a certain place that no longer exists and then the bot became self-aware and then got glitched out of its mind and just started spitting words up wherever it could. Now, in 2012, this is where the KLP poster took a hiatus for a few months. Maybe they went on vacation. Maybe they oh, went to go get some pies. Couple months. All right. Mm -hmm. But in 2013, the great return. Up until this point in 2013, all of KLP posters comments were unique, written every single time that they were posted, not copy pasted, mm. not you know, majorly repetitive, what have you. But after this point, whenever they returned from their uh, year-long vacation to this restaurant, it seems like most of the posts were primarily pre-written and simply copy-pasted, uh, which is also referred to as copy pasta on the internet. And it seemed like there were dedicated accounts that would control this copy pasta and throw it out to wherever they could. That's a lot of time if there's all these accounts too. Oh. Mm hmm. Because then you gotta link the. Oh, man. Then you got emails. Right. What's interesting is that uh, among all of these accounts, the only detail that was ever in common was the location. These accounts listed all of their locations as Spanish Fork, Utah. It's also worth mentioning that not all of the accounts had this listed as their location because not all websites required a location, but this is essentially a point for every every account that needed a location. Picked Spanish Fork. My guess was because they're so into pie that they picked a place that had fork in the name. Um, but there's a lot of forks in, uh, in the United States. 
It's also interesting, like, I went to Google Maps to see, okay, you say you drove over 500 miles to get this pie. Let's see if this place is about 500 miles, and it's 1,900 miles, or about a little over 3,000 kilometers away from Asheville, North Carolina. Technically over 500 miles, yeah. but that's like saying my drive to work is over 30 seconds. It, 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 technically true and unhelpful. Right. It's much further. There's, there's like, I don't know. It's, it's the most simplest of detail mm -hmm. that, yeah, that doesn't really quite give it its true, um, just true length on this one. Right. I was just, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm just uh, I'll, begging for some, some I, thread of consistency. I'm having you know? fun with this one. I'm very <laughs> curious to see where this goes. <laughs> like, I'm curious to see once we kind of finalize these details where you think it's going to go. Okay. Before we hit the, the theories. But yeah, it's, I'm just clinging on for dear life, hoping to find some sort of, because if, if this ended up being 550 miles away, I mean, obviously, I know it's Utah, but if it was a different place, I would have been like, whoa, there's something here. Now we can start kind of honing in on someone oh, that lived yeah. here and now lives yeah. there and blah, blah, blah. and everything, but... Nothing. This is either a criminal mastermind or the most random person I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> so there is a Pastebin website that has eight of the common copy pasta sort of posts that the KLP poster tended to use. I'm just gonna fly into the first one. It says, hello ladies, please take a few minutes and enjoy my true stories about the wonderful world of key lime pies as well as the magic of the most beautiful Miss Anita Palaez, wife extraordinaire and the beauty queen of the key lime pie world. Oh, what an honor that must be. I don't know if that's one whole comment or if that's it. This whole text document has a lot of text into it. But the, at one point they're talking about two lovers snuggling, watching the show. I thought it said snow. That's sure what my love and I are <laughs> contemplating as we eat our second slice of pie. Well, eat your heart outs. Better luck next time. Some very goofy stuff in here. It's gotta, it's gotta be a troll. It's gotta be a troll, but who, who's got the patience? Okay, they took a year off and they came right back to it, but this has been years. Until 2016, right? That's seven years of consistent comment making, a thousand comments. Maybe someone's working on their writing skills. Just the motive. Also, who? Who indeed. <laughs> and here's the thing, audience members, task force abroad. We love to scratch the surface on a lot of different mysteries, and, and they're, they're all stories. This story, I have to admit, might not have a beautiful conclusion, might not even have some compelling theories. This is just, I, I thought this would just be a real fun one to dive into, because sometimes mysteries mm -hmm. are spooky scary, you know, they get the chills on the back of your neck, and sometimes they make you giggle. And every now and then, Fredo, I gotta make you giggle, Yeah. because then the giggles make the scary ones more scary. You know what I'm saying? It, it, look, I'm, I'm giggling. <laughs> 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 but back to the timeline okay let's keep it serious here on this podcast all right yeah, yeah in 2016 it seems to be that there was a notable decrease in the amount of comments after reddit user keylime wtf made that reddit post so it seems that whoever whatever maybe it's a cryptid maybe bigfoot's out there making these comments is aware that they just became viral and then they took a step back mm. and that's where the, you know, the copycats came in. So, so that really calls into question, is this a troll? Because every time we try to pigeonhole this entity, this person into uh, a definition or some sort of box, they do something or say something that completely shakes that reality, that, that, that guess, that theory. And a troll would be eating this up. They would be misdirecting like crazy. Most likely. That's usually why trolls do it for attention. Right. But as soon as there's a lick of attention, it seems like they kind of they kind of recoil a little bit. Or are they backing off because now that they're aware the pressure's on, performance anxiety. Now that they're aware that the internet knows of them and they're becoming they're becoming famous. Uh, maybe it's some type of, I need to go back, cover my tracks. I need mm. to make sure to like, you know, I can't be traced. You know, it's time to start really refining what I'm doing. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's totally possible that, you know, so far we've kind of identified that this might be an older person just based on the names and references and, and timelines. It could be that someone 
at this point in time. I don't know, I'm just guessing. Someone in their 50s or 60s might be a little bit unfamiliar with the internet, but not so unfamiliar that they can't comment. And when they start getting attention on them, they might not know how far that these Redditors can go. Can they find out who I am? Can they track me down and get my information? And maybe that's why they're backing down a little bit. Yep. It, it was something where they were having a laugh, they were having a good time, talking about whatever. Then it got real. Then it got real, right? Maybe this is some sort of public journaling and you know because back in myspace you might comment on a stranger's page and you might say something silly i mean you don't even it doesn't matter like you, you just throw words out there and you're just impressed to see your own words reflected <laughs> back you on the internet <laughs> yeah but now it's a totally different internet oh yeah this information is just all public mm -hmm. so so yeah okay so we have an older person of sorts perhaps Someone who probably lived in the Asheville area. Someone who might be goofing off, maybe with a little bit of honesty, a little bit of goof, and then maybe a little concern when they pick up some steam. But what's interesting too, you know, there's a lot of copycats that started to appear in 2016. But not only that, I mean, yes, the air quote official comments did kind of seem to decrease, but they didn't seem to stop. Uh, because it seems like a lot of these comments were still being made, but they were also referencing Reddit. They were saying things like, do you ever wonder if you're being watched? Or saying things like, are you still finding it hard to believe that Kucharitaville really exists and that it's not just a figment of your imagination? <laughs> so they're playful. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're very much at this point self-aware of what is happening. And I don't know almost kind of like antagonizing the internet right so maybe this idea that this is uh someone recoiling is just completely off because you're right they seem to be poking back a little bit despite posting a lot less but why the year break you know what i mean why the year break it's a good question and i mean if we knew if we could try to profile this person a little bit more you could really use that year break to say like, hey, this person was deployed, or hey, this person went uh, on a mission trip, or just went on a long extended sabbatical, or, or what have mm -hmm. you. You could really start to try to identify the person, and then from there a motive, but that's where this person is really hard to, uh, to pinpoint. Like I said, a lot of shake and bake happening. Hey everybody, Trevor Collins here. A few messages for your ear holes. I want to cut to the chase. RTX is upon us. That's right. Rooster Teeth's convention that happens every year. We are a part of it. We're doing stuff for it for Red Web. Uh, we have a happy hour that you guys already sold out. So thank you so much. I'm excited for that. But we have a panel as well that you can come attend and check out and ask us questions. Hear from everybody that is on the Red Web crew, from the researchers to the editors to Fredo and I and everything in between. So yeah, really excited about it. It's happening this week, essentially, kicking off, uh, if you're listening to this as the day it comes out, it's kicking off on July 8th, which is this Thursday. Go to rtxevent.com to check it out and figure out how you can get involved. There's a bunch of stuff going on, so uh, look forward to hearing and seeing you guys there. A couple other notes I want to say before we jump into the sponsors is thank you as always. I feel like I can't go an ad break without saying thank you because you guys buy up the pins and the, the shirts and everything, all of our merch at store.roosterteeth.com. Thank you so much for the continued support. Uh, we continue to have to bug the e-commerce team to refill everything to make sure they're there for everyone. So keep on it. Uh, I've given them a few ideas for some really cool merch to come down the line. Hint, hint, some pins, uh, but also a lot of other really cool task force, mystery themed stuff coming down the way. Some bespoke items to put it into fancy terms. So keep an eye out on the store uh, for new items. And obviously we'll let you know here. But also, hey, we have a YouTube channel. If you prefer to listen to us on YouTube, you can do that now. We provide the visuals there, as well as a small little animation to go along with the visuals. Not super crazy, but nice and subtle to set the ambiance for you. So if you prefer to listen on YouTube, you can do that now. And yeah, we'll see you over there. YouTube.com slash redwebpod. You can subscribe, make us YouTube famous, I want to get the little silver play button, I, nay, the gold play button, and hang it up in my room so I can show mother. And, uh, that sounded strange. Anyway, YouTube play buttons aside, let's talk about some of the sponsors we have for this week. Fantastic brands, as always. This episode of Red Web is sponsored by HelloFresh. It's so easy to fall into a recipe rut making the same meals over and over again, but that's where HelloFresh can help break the boring cycle. HelloFresh sends fresh, pre-measured, seasonal recipes straight to your door so you can skip those trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. 
HelloFresh offers a variety with over 27 recipes every single week and a range of flavors, cuisines, and ingredients. You're always discovering new recipes and it's never boring. I was able to make a bunch of recipes thanks to HelloFresh. They sent us, uh, myself and my girlfriend, many different meal types. One of the more recent ones we had were these firecracker meatballs. They were very good. Honestly, it makes me feel like I'm an actual chef and I can impress the ladies. Or singular lady, just my girlfriend. Uh, but yeah, it, it it always tastes really good. So if you hate those trips to the store like I do, I highly recommend some HelloFresh. So go to HelloFresh.com slash RedWeb14, that's 1-4, and use code RedWeb14 for up to 14 free meals plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash R-E-D-W-E-B-1-4, and then use code RedWeb14 for up to 14 free meals plus free shipping. This episode of Red Web is also sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Is there something interfering with your happiness or that is preventing you from achieving your goals? If so, BetterHelp can help you work on that. BetterHelp assesses your needs and matches you with your own licensed professional therapist, and you can start communicating with them in under 48 hours. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses, plus you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today, so visit BetterHelp.com slash RedWeb, that's Better H-E-L-P, and join the over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. If this sounds interesting to you, we have a special offer for you just for RedWeb listeners. You get 10% off your first month. Again, that's BetterHelp.com slash RedWeb. And with that said, let's jump right back into the mystery. So basically to recap, 2016 onward, it seems to be where the copycats came out, the dedicated accounts making uh, Kuchi Key Lime Pie comments really decreased and ultimately stopped posting, uh, at least the ones we could verify as being the authentic ones. A lot of people at this point are starting to say, hey, is this some sort of ARG? Is this perhaps just a creepypasta, uh, just a really well-played one, a very avant-garde version of a creepypasta, which uh, for those who are a little less internet uh, literate, a creepypasta is just a a copy-paste story that tends to be spooky, that tends to make its way around the internet. It also (laughs) refers to people just writing short, scary stories. Spooky pie. Spooky pie. Yeah, man. I... It's it, If that is what they're doing, it's a long game, and I think the only thing that they're trying to do is really shake your notion of reality. The only thing that they could really be doing, I mean, the restaurant exists, but the pie is not necessarily, the burger's not necessarily, right? It's a seafood place. So maybe they're, you know, they're trying to set up a sort of Mandela effect situation, right? We have those glitch in the matrix stories where people are like... This seemed real, but like the details are just slightly off. And so maybe, maybe whoever this is was really trying to lay the groundwork for like an alternate reality sort of situation or a sister reality parallel universe sort of thing. And it just never got that far. I don't know. It's just uh, Neo trolling. It's it's Neo. He's the one. (laughs) The one with the best pies, those goody goody pies. (laughs) This, um, so far, I mean, we haven't gotten to the theories yet. It's not as dark as I thought it would be. No. It's very lighthearted, and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Sometimes we need a little departure. But here's where the internet steps in. Now, you could take this with a grain of salt, because it is the internet, and it is a claim. But if it is true, I appreciate the effort done, as long as, you know, private information and personal space was respected but reddit user named a cult by definition claimed to have contacted kuchi's son in 2017 who confirmed the existence of the restaurant and that quote he's just as confused about it as we are end quote so Mm. we finally have someone who supposedly reached out to the family the family's like i got no idea what's going on right and then in 2018 there was a reddit user that was claiming to be kuchi palaez's daughter and they said her father and grandfather were not in good health so it was very unlikely that they were the ones leaving the comments now there's no proof of this again these are claims made on the internet someone can claim to be so-and-so's daughter all day long but if you take these at face value it does it does seem to just kind of add more confusion but then again if you don't want to believe these things and you do think it's the owners of this restaurant for whatever reason talking about their old restaurant yeah i guess they would have a motive to come forward and say, hey, I'm the daughter, it's not that. Ah, I can't. It's just the, if it's just, oh, this is what the alleged internet said. Yeah. 
the internet said allegedly. Right. Oh, I can't. I can't. As much as I want to, you know, I'm just a gr- I, mean, I want the. I want things to line up. I want things to make sense. I just. Well, this might be one of the the most non sequitur mysteries we're going to cover. There's okay. There's a subreddit. One last piece, and then we'll dive into the theories. There, there's a subreddit dedicated to this entire mystery, and you're like, wow, awesome, a community to talk about how like what is this? Let's pull it all apart. It's been private for at least a year for unknown reasons. And when the subreddit initially went private, the message upon attempting to visit it said, Jake Carson tribute. Jake Carson being one of the common names used as a signature for the end of a key lime pie comment. But now if you try to go there, it only says that the subreddit is closed. There's no special message or anything like that. And that's where this whole trail goes cold. Damn, any posts after that? Uh, it's hard to say. I think there have been comments. Christian, feel free to, to step in if you if you know more. But I, I feel like there have been comments on and off since 2016. It's just that since the events of 2016 kicked off, right, this becoming viral and, and obvious copycats starting to show up, it seems like the real comments stopped then or around that time and that only fake ones continue. Yeah, you nailed it. There may have been comments posted since then, but since the rise of the copycats, it's just become so much harder to tell which is a real comment and which isn't, since there's no way to concretely verify it. Right. And so it's possible that it's continued, but since no one's sure, they just claim that 2016 was the unofficial end, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, even if an official comment was made, there's so much noise now and so much doubt that people would be like, you're a fake, you're a phony. We want the real pie, man. But there doesn't seem like it's easy to even prove that you're the, you know, just through um, text that you are said person. You're the one writing the comments and stuff. Yeah, I mean, like beyond like what you can type out as your signature, I feel like there are numeric signatures that are attached to an account or to an IP or to a computer uh, or or even just having a specific email, I feel like you could use. But I don't know, maybe this person just didn't want to be identified. And that's why they really started to wind down as things spun up, as people became more aware of this topic. Yeah, and everyone wants a spotlight. When we talked about it earlier, we've been talking about it during a handful of our you know, episodes just because it's gotten so crazy out there with people trying to claim this and that. Yeah. But some people just don't want a spotlight. Some people don't want, I uh, just want to live a, a quieter life. Right. Some people want to make ripples, but they don't want to be uh, at the front of it. Yeah. So they want to make some ripples. They want to see people react to something they put out there. I think there's definitely something very human about that. Putting out something whether it's something as simple as a video or a song or a comment or an idea, an opinion, and then watching people interact with that thing is a uniquely human process, right? And so there could just be people out there that wanted to cause ripples in a very niche realm, but again, it calls into question, like, what are they after? What is the end goal here? God, it could be anything at this point. Right. But without further ado, why don't we dive into some of the theories that attempt to pull this mess together? Uh, And maybe along the way, you and I can decipher what the motive would be behind each theory. I'd be very interested to hear these theories because I don't... Do you have any uh, feelings? Like, theories yourself? I I thought it would be something dark and it just doesn't seem that way. There, nothing ever came up of like it led, you know, it led to a website. Yeah, no phone numbers, no, no active reaching out. Yeah, it seems like pe- like whatever this is was recoiling from the attention a little bit. Well, one of the main theories that attempt to address what's going on here is that this is some sort of bot. Now, this was my gut instinct, and that's the reason why I was kind of talking about it throughout this episode is because this is kind of where my mind automatically goes. But let's talk through the theory as it stands. It's based on the fact that there are a large amount of comments on a variety of websites and the posts are incredibly large and prolific. The language in many of the comments sounds that to, uh, sounds that of like a bot, right? Very uncanny valley and random. And if you've ever talked with an AI or a bot online, they are very close, right? There's that Turing test level where can they, can they pass as a human or can you definitely sniff out that they- Close, but still. Exactly. Feels feel just slightly hollow, mm-hmm. even a little scripted. 
Yeah. And so on top of all this information, people are like, well, okay, maybe there's a bot that's going out here. Maybe the family that owned the restaurant were trying to use this bot to either encourage people to come to their website, to come to their restaurant, to find out about them. This could be some sort of SEO or search engine optimization play uh, to increase. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. the more you type it, the, and, and then all of a sudden you start getting traction. Yeah, right. And so, yeah, it'll it'll pop up on the internet. Yeah. I mean, this is, and this is in the early 2000s, so that's very much how SEO worked. And it kind of works that way now. It's a little bit more intelligent. But again, a search engine would crawl a bunch of websites, blogs being one of the main uh, websites around that time. And it would scrub for certain words. It would scrub for links and what's linked out and what's linked towards that website. And from that, it would build a web. And from that web, it could identify how it should surface websites against search results and against other websites. And so this could have been a very sophisticated at the time way to have your website or rather your restaurant appear at the top when people search key lime pies. If you're trying to establish yourself as a world leader in key lime pies, which I'll be real with you, I don't know why this is coming to mind right now, and I'm sure you don't have a similar experience, but there was a point in time, like a year in elementary school, where everybody was obsessed with key lime pie. I don't know if it was just a hot commodity at the time, but Florida, when I, I grew up in Indiana, Florida was like the main destination for holidays, and everyone would come back talking about key lime pie, and I was, I, I've never had it in my life. I don't think I still had it. But it's interesting because the timeline here isn't all that far off, and so maybe, they're just trying to capture a, a hot commodity and get attention off of it. I really don't know. I just don't quite know what to make of it. Right? I, I think it might be something as, as silly as just a little bit of an SEO play. Trying to navigate people to their restaurant, trying to make a name for themselves. How else is that done? Uh, you know, if not organically, then by brute force. I guess there are a couple wrinkles though that are worth talking about, right? Not all of the comments had that bot-like language, and that could be answered by the owners themselves or a hired individual coming through and typing up the articles. But then again, why would they be so odd in, in nature? And especially if you're trying to promote a restaurant, why would you start getting sexual uh, in certain ones? Exactly. Why get sexual at some point? Wouldn't you want to talk about, I don't know, the restaurant or maybe also put out there some other stuff of like, um, some legit ads. <laughs> right. <laughs> no. Right. I mean, it, I don't know. And a couple other wrinkles that can more easily be challenged now would be that a lot of these websites that had comment sections had CAPTCHAs and had email verification built in, which would be a little bit more complicated for a bot to be able to figure out and leave a comment. So if they're scrubbing through automatically, that would make that challenging. God, someone just typed this by hand. Oof. Yeah. I mean, years of typing by hand. I mean, if that's your business, but also like the fact that this continued after the business closed and that too, I guess really my mind was open to the idea. Maybe they did this while the restaurant was opened and it wasn't identified until after, but people didn't really identify until 2016 in searching. They went back to 2009 to find some of the kickoff comments. But were they lost to time or did we just like jump in in the middle of a, a, you know, was there a bot that was active while the restaurant was alive and then we're only seeing the 2009 plus comments? I, I just like, it makes me wonder why only after and not during and why is there no archive of maybe comments made during? I, I don't know. Just, it calls into question a lot of the theory, right? It does. There's a lot of holes in that. And also, I don't know, maybe it's just because I haven't come across it, but I didn't think there, I just can't think of there being like a lot of like restaurants. One, if they were doing it themselves, having the time because they're running their own business, a restaurant, like to run a restaurant is a lot of, a lot of hours work. and yeah. work and dedication, but then like to hire somebody else to do this type of play. Like, I don't understand what the sales pitch is there. You know, we're gonna build up your SEO by just writing a bunch of random stuff talking about your place. I mean, it's uh, it's that out of the box thinking that sometimes works though, you know? Mm -hmm. It definitely sounds strange, but I can definitely picture that being a way to attempt surfacing your website. The, the hole in that one is really just the timeline. Why is it only that we're finding it after, right? In 2009. You know, another thing, 
And this could just be detaching it from the restaurant in general. This is a, attempting to uh, respond to that hole in the theory. And, and some do theorize, yes, it's still a bot, but perhaps someone is testing out an advanced bot or a series of bots and they're trying to build a bot that can low key pass the Turing test, right? That is to say it can speak indistinguishably like a human. And this is just an early iteration of it. And mm -hmm. uh, and so it's testing itself out. It's it's trying things. Maybe whoever is writing this is adding manually adding language into the comments for the bot to learn off of. Uh, and then when they were found out, it kind of disappeared. Right. We've seen that with random uh, YouTube videos and random YouTube channels that just get thousands of videos slammed onto their page. And all that is to do is to test the algorithm and to test the infrastructure of the website behind the scenes. Yeah. In a very similar and odd way, this this could be that. Uh, it's definitely very prolific. That just sounds so expansive. Instead of yeah. having people come sit down and, and then having a controlled test to just mm -hmm. scatter it to the internet. Right. Setting that up um, and then tracking it. I mean, I don't know. It doesn't seem efficient for what you're trying to accomplish, if that's the route. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a, an interesting theory and it's definitely where my mind wants to go. But uh, there's a lot of holes in it that challenge it. You know, another piece that people started to refer to was in 2016. After the U.S. election, uh, Donald Trump won the election, became the president. A lot of the comments made by the KLP poster referred to that. Now, that isn't to say like a bot can't build in uh, political topics or newsworthy events into their comments. That's very easy to do nowadays, especially in 2016. That's not too long ago. Uh, so I don't know if that's necessarily a hole in the, the theory that it's a bot, but a lot of people are thinking, well, because of this copy paste nature and this new information being structured in that someone did that intentionally, that it feels a little bit more human. But it's really hard to say, man. I mean, that's that's the the challenge with this theory is trying to delineate this very odd language. Is it just someone being a bit of a troll or is this just a, a bot that's trying its best? I, I'm leaning towards troll. Mm hmm. Oh, man. Because mm. the the bot just gets so random, like the sexual stuff that 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 still doesn't make sense to me. Right. That's a very human thing to, to keep leaning into. Yeah. Unless you taught a bot with a lot of sexual language, uh, you know, <laughs> you're cybering with this bot maybe on the side to teach it. And then it starts spitting this language out <laughs> to the world. Just <laughs> well, you know, falling in love with your uh, <laughs> your creation. I guess. It's her. It's uh, this is Joaquin Phoenix's creation here you know oh that was a solid movie very solid just fell in love and then yeah the the bot went on its its own way to talk about pie and right. sexually he was like you were commenting on my site you were commenting about my pies now you comment on every site about burgers <laughs> all at the same time we had something intimate something special and now you talk with every website and then and then spoiler alert just like in the film 2016 the bot goes away. Goes away. The bot yeah. goes to wherever bots go. The <laughs> internet. The back end of the internet. I don't know. Their own secret back end of in the interwebs. Hey, maybe to, that's to it. To talk about key lime pie mm -hmm. all they want. Well, the next theory is quite interesting itself. Uh, it kind of pulls on one of the threads that we also kind of outlined earlier. Not, not too distinctly, but... Uh, a lot of people do believe that whoever the KLP poster is, is actually not an individual, but rather that of a group of posters. You know, this would make sense because there's a couple of different styles that, again, fit. I'm going to make this very confusing sounding. They tend to fit a macro level style, but then each of those uh, signature names that I referred to kind of focus on different topics and different language, right, within. So, like I said, someone was a bit more sexual and a bit more, I'm replying to the article I'm commenting on. Another one was a bit more copy-paste, very much within the confines of Key Lime Pie and staying within that topic, but all had a very similar writing style. Hope that makes sense. No, it, it completely uh, plays in my mind. Um, the thing about that is there is, to get one person to do this, and waste so much time and then to get even more people to do this and waste time i, I still don't know what the motive is right like, what are you getting out of it that's that is the question exactly how do you again you know what's the pitch there <laughs> right I mean, the theory attempts to, to, to answer that, thankfully. And it, okay. a lot of the people that think that it's a cult or a group of people say, okay, this could be as simple as an inside joke. 
And this is where I want to refer back to Barely Sociable and his content, and his research, uh, how a lot of people tried to stitch this together very loosely with things like Lake City Quiet Pills. Now I'm with him, I, I don't really see the connection here at all, but there is something familiar to that in that this could be coded communication. This could be uh, a way for a private group to communicate private information in a public space using innocuous language, talking about pies and burgers and restaurants. To us, it looks goofy, uh, but to those in this group, it could mean everything. There was a previous episode where we there was something similar and I just went, what is the point of that? Why not just post it on a private? Right. I mean, was it Lake City Quiet Pills? It, I we think it was that, that one, yeah. 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 Or just like, but why go through the trouble? I don't just create your own site. You know what I mean? Or you could, there's a lot of sites that you get, there's a secret access to, um, you know, uh, another layer of the site that isn't visible to the masses. Well, I mean, like, I definitely agree with you, but to play devil's advocate, and I think about, you know, Red Web, our podcast, and other podcasts of this nature. Mm -hmm. Once you find something like that, though, people tend to really stare, right? We talked about a website that was nothing but a login page. And when people may, were able to get past that, it was just another login page. But they were able to see that there was terabytes of information on it. And so people just kept paying attention to it. Lake City Quiet Pills, they were talking privately behind the scenes of the website. When people found that, their information was spilled and they tried, then they had to like basically shut it down. And yeah. so maybe the theory here, despite yes, standing out and still getting attention, uh, maybe the thesis behind this move was to hide in plain sight, speak with plain language that everyone else would just kind of gloss over. What year did they disappear? They stopped speaking somewhere around 2016 is what we kind of theorize. Um, hard to really pinpoint it. That's kind of where it ebbed and flowed from uh, consistent, what seems to be authentic posts to copycat posts. I mean, you had AIM, you had TeamSpeak. There were ways to communicate. Oh my were, God, TeamSpeak. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. There were services where you could communicate. You're not wrong, man. There's like a thousand different ways to go about this. And so it's definitely not a bulletproof theory, but no, it's, no, for sure. Again, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting um, to think about all the different angles and stuff. Well, you're definitely right. There's definitely a lot of holes in this theory. I have some more information here oh. that will attempt to respond to some of the holes that we poked. Okay. I like the sound of that. But yeah, we'll see. We'll, we'll see what happens. So a lot of the people online that believe this theory or subscribe to this particular theory do rely on the fact that there's a lot of specific phrases and terms that are unique as well that are posted in these posts. And that's kind of what they're leaning on. A lot of the graphic and almost pornographic comments that were made in a lot of these would probably get ignored is what they feel. Uh, and again, this is kind of my thought as well. They're, they're innocuous comments that would otherwise get glossed over. And, and that's kind of building the case a bit. But then it gets a little bit more tea leaves. It gets a little bit more trying to read into some uh, some names like Roger Ramjet, one of the aliases that the KLP posters signed comments with. When looking into where that name comes from, it comes from an old cartoon in one of the episodes. Now, this is a bit of a stretch, I admit. But in one of the episodes, there is the character Roger Ramjet who is hiding microfilm inside of pies, basically hiding information, photographs, otherwise uh, maybe newspaper uh, inside of pies. Online sleuths believe that this could be a sign that information is hidden in these comments because the comments are the pie because they're all about pies. And, and that would answer why the restaurant has nothing to do with pies and why the restaurant really has nothing to do with burgers. It was a seafood thing. And so um, that would attempt to answer that distinct disconnect, right? Yeah, even you know, if it was that, man, they did a really good job covering it up because no one was able to crack it. Exactly, that's exactly right. right? No one was able to get into this pie. Exactly. Another piece of interesting trivia here is that Kuchi, K-U-T-C-H-I-E, the name I've been referring to this whole time, is actually Jamaican slang for a pot that holds marijuana. So there's another possibility here uh, that's kind of hiding in plain sight of a an item that hides something, uh, something else, whether it's illegal or whether it's information, what have you. Um, just wanted to mention that because that does go hand in hand with this theory. Now, to kind of build on what you were saying, 
Uh, there is a blogger named Yore Sa who claims that these comments in general use steganography. That is to say, certain segments of the comments represent a letter or something else, whatever the message is. Uh, for example, different capital letters and periods can represent something else. There's a lot of, when you look at these comments, there's a lot of random capitalization. And so it does seem to track that there could be some hidden message. But again, to your point, show me a solved puzzle then. Show me the decoded yep. phrase or meaning and I will subscribe to this 100%. Yeah, I, I will dive in head first. I just, if the internet's going for it, we didn't, they didn't crack a single one. There are thousands of these. Right. And at this point in the theory, this is where Christian uh, and Jillian, our researchers and producers, wrote in the in the theory that kind of, again, uh, picking up what you were saying, which is there's no real reason why, and this is the biggest wrinkle, why they would communicate with this method when there's a lot of other better ones that exist. Countless methods for sure. Maybe this is a decent one, but there are certainly better, more protected ways for a private group to speak. So. Yep. To do it this way is agreeably a bit of a stretch. And so for that reason, I, it's, it's, it is hard to um, subscribe to this, though not completely outlandish. You know, maybe it was a bit of, a, of an odd group of people and this is how they did it. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Some people tie their shoes with the bunny ears, man. I, I, so that's the theory that this could be a cult or otherwise just a group of folks maybe behind this. But that leads nicely into our next theory, which is simply that this is just one person, not a bot, not a group of people, uh, but rather one person, perhaps even the owners themselves. And this is based on just the consistent diction style of, of the comments that were left, the fact that never more than 10 were made in one day. You know, it feels very much that this could be human up until the point that it became very repetitive copy pasta in nature. Now to kind of build out this theory, you know, it's based on the idea that obviously never, that at no point too many comments were left at any given time. And the fact that it was able to get through verifications of email, CAPTCHAs, and replying to themselves, replying to articles in unique ways, that would be difficult for a bot. It seems to stand to reason that this might be rather just a person. And with the very specific knowledge of the restaurant, that this entity, this person, I keep saying entity like it's a ghost, like that this person had, that it could be one of the former owners, employees, or just a regular patron, <laughs> right? They knew uh, Oswald and his wife and his kids. So um, the theory kind of builds out that this is perhaps Oswald Peleas Sr., the man who started the restaurant, the father to the other Oswald we were discussing. Uh, because who else would have as much information about Coochie's Key West Cafe? With just a lot of time on their hands, I guess? Perhaps. You know, and, and that's where the theory kind of builds out the idea that maybe this is just a poor attempt at a joke. Maybe this is him trying to start another business, focusing more on the key lime pies side of things, right? Because the restaurant didn't really focus on that. Uh, maybe this was just having fun in retirement uh, and, and maybe trying to build up the idea, drum up some nostalgia so people could say, oh, I remember that place. And then maybe that would be able to get him a loan so he could uh, start up his business again. There's a, there's a lot of like little nuanced reasons that we could come up with for, for him doing this. But Man, what a stretch. Very, very stretchy. N no, I mean, in, ter in terms of like trying to spark up a business again. Oh, no, like, right. Yeah. Oh, my God goodness you are really just swinging for the fences wildly absolutely and i think at this point in time let me do some quick mental math he would have been around 80 give or oh, take oh come on right so in 2009 he would have been 81 ish <laughs> that makes it this person in his in, in their 80s mm -hmm. writing all this and even then the extra layer of the theory is for you know maybe possibly starting up some buzz Maybe yeah, get another business you know, going. What? Maybe he just didn't have, you know, he had a different understanding of what the internet could be. Maybe, maybe. But to kind of build out this theory more, some Redditors, again, you have to take internet claims with a huge grain of salt, but Redditors who had claimed to have visited Coogee's Key West Cafe said that they recalled Oswald Jr. as being quite an eccentric person. So whether that mm. means the father might be eccentric, whether that means Oswald Jr. is the one making these comments, it, if you take this for face value, it stands to reason that maybe uh, maybe it's an eccentric family and that that's why they were doing <laughs> yeah. something that would otherwise seem a little outlandish to the rest of us. And they were just like, yeah, maybe they, they, they were doing this 
and they get together during dinner and they laugh about it and they tell mm-hmm. stories about it and that was their entertainment. Yeah. That's all it was. Well, his nickname was Coochie and so uh, whether it was the father or himself, maybe that's why they were so obsessed with these key lime pies and calling it Coochie's Key West. I, I don't really know. But anyway, uh, one of the first comments ever written... But wait, hold on. Go ahead. If we're going back and saying that this was to maybe bring nostalgia to the place, they were talking about things that weren't even on the menu. That's true. That was me firing from the hip, to be fair. I was just saying... Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. For sure, know. for sure. I'm sure we're... <laughs> but you're not wrong. I, I skimmed over that. <laughs> you know, we're both sitting here firing from the hip and gut checking, and I was like, wait a second. Ooh. Oh... You remember that red lobster? Oh, I remember. <laughs> I remember the Hold on a second. They kind of serve a little bit of everything. Let me let me dig in deep. I remember the uh what do they not serve? <laughs> Yeah, man, you want a red lobster? They serve a lot of stuff. I know that. Damn it! That <laughs> I was like, apart. I was trying to, I was trying to drum up some fake red lobster nostalgia. But you're right; they're, they're just another American restaurant serving a little bit of everything. They serve a ton of. They stuff. They might as well I mean, just be Chili's man, with a different name. Good luck trying to pull something off their menu that doesn't exist. <laughs> well, anyway, there went that metaphor, but that was funny. But yeah, you're not wrong. I mean, like they're drumming up nostalgia for something they never served, apparently. I think maybe they were just trying to drum up a new business. Hey, remember that restaurant? Now take that nostalgia and turn it into a new company. I, whatever. Was it? Um, I might have missed it. Was it a chain? I don't think it was a chain. Yeah, weird. Like, who else is going to remember this damn place? Right. It's North Carolina. It's not like a huge tourist destination. And it's Asheville, which I don't know the population of, but it's not a huge town or city. So it's like... I don't know, man. You're really going after the internet at large uh, to maybe drum something up. This is, uh, that's my uh, my guesswork there. But like I said, yeah, these comments kind of, especially the first one that was ever left by the KLP poster, uh, goes into the decades long history of this restaurant. And so who better to know that than someone directly involved with the restaurant itself, especially this family. And that's why a lot of people, regardless of the oddity happening here, regardless of the lack of clear motive as to why they were doing this, uh, that's why a lot of people say, no, 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 for sure it was Oswald Sr. or Jr. And and that's all we know. Uh, we don't know why, but for sure it was them. That's what, that's what a lot of people think. And a lot of people do continue the theory from this point to say that, you know, Oswald Sr. is up there in age when these comments are starting, right? He's, he's around 81. And as they continue up into 2016, you know, the comments are getting stranger in coordination with uh, Oswald Sr.'s health, unfortunately, declining. Uh. And yeah, and so the, uh, some people do kind of dabble with the idea that maybe there's dementia in play. Um, dark as it may be, but uh, but but there a lot of people do kind of try to connect the dots there because it is a real a real situation that one might find themselves in. What's what's more interesting too, and I'll try to keep this part brief. Uh, during that hiatus, now I'm really happy that we're kind of diving into this because this is where you can really take a candidate for or whoever you think this is. Look at their 2012 and see if it lines up with the fact that they stopped commenting in 2012. Because it seems like in the in the hiatus year, uh, comments started popping up about Oz's Gold.com instead of Coochie's Key Lime Pies. It's not entirely positive uh, on on the uh, Oz Gold's front. Not saying like Oz Gold's amazing. Some of them uh, were were a bit neutral or negative in messaging. But it does seem to be interesting that Oswald Peleas's Facebook account was also posting about this website during this time period. Uh, the links redirected to Numis, which was a known investment uh, pyramid scheme, essentially. Ooh. And it is unknown for sure if the domain belonged to Oswald Sr. or not, but some do believe that it does because of uh, of the nickname Oz being in the title. Oz is gold. But on top of that, a lot of the comments talking about ozgold.com refer to or mention Oswald Peleas. Not necessarily specific on junior or senior, but... Flash forward, I'm keeping this all very brief because there's a lot of information within this. Uh, Numis was eventually shut down, and at that point in time is when the Jake Carson Facebook account uh, showed up and began posting. Once again, Jake Carson being one of those 
uh, pseudonyms, one of those signature names mm-hmm. that uh, that showed up and began posting about the pies. And so that's what's really weird to me is that within this one distinct year uh, where things changed just for this moment, there were some other corroborating factors that also changed, right? Oz's gold showing up, their names being attached to it and Facebook accounts rising and falling and commenting along the way with this. And so again, it calls into question what the motive is outside of perhaps this pyramid scheme. But the fact that this is like the best piece of information we have, this is the the most aligned we can make the stars. So are there is it like officially attached to this pyramid scheme? Like in the sense of just like, I don't know, there's some kind of like business write up or? Uh, it seems like the links from ozisgold.com linked directly to a known pyramid scheme called Numis, N-U-M-I-S. And it's only theoretically related, Oz's gold and uh, the key lime pie thing, they're only theoretically related by way of the 2012 thing, by Oz and Oswald, and by the fact that some comments mention Oswald Pelez, and the timing just happens to work out. It's definitely a stretch, yeah. but I mean, of all the stretches within this particular topic with all the oddities happening and non sequitur pieces of fact, this is, I, I just knew that this kind of year would be the best opportunity to try to compare apples and oranges and say, mm-hmm. you went down this year, but this came up that year. And so that's what people are kind of leaning on is the timeline kind of meshing up here. And maybe, you know, and maybe in 2016, uh, by the fact that they became viral or uh, whoever was doing these posts became viral he then went okay I'm, I'm a little uncomfortable with this maybe i can now be attached if they look back well enough that i can be attached to this pyramid scheme and so they backed off you know oh Ye- uh, yeah 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 it's definitely a stretch but it's like and i'm not fully subscribed to it but it's um i don't know it's like it's the it's the only thing that really tries to lean on the otherwise non sequitur facts at hand. You know what I mean? Like it, it really tries to line things up, man. But Oswald senior passed away, you know, he at 93 in January of 2020. And so, you know, if it was him, if it was his kids, we might not ever know, especially when you have the kids themselves supposedly coming onto Reddit to say they're in no condition to leave these comments. They're definitely not doing it. But then again, you know, my tinfoil hat says, why would you come out of the blue and say it's not us, you know, unless uh, people might be harassing them. I mean, that's true. That is very true. I don't know. uh, Some of these Internet sleuths might be probing a little bit too deep and and bugging them. And uh, for every one person that finds out about this topic, I'm sure a handful of them are reaching out to try to see if they can solve it. But yeah, trying to get the scoop. I don't know. Very strange, very strange topic. But a lot of fun and, and definitely uh, been around the internet for a little bit. So we'd be remiss if we didn't uh, if we didn't visit this one. Yeah, that was a fun one. I thought I completely thought you were messing with me. Uh, I'll be <laughs> honest. I was like, what? What? Uh, it's definitely was a, someone messing with someone. I thought it was a bait and switch. <laughs> Man, I just th- look. I mean, sure. You know, this is one of those. You know, with every episode, it's like, oh, I wish we had a resolution. Mm-hmm. Uh, it wouldn't be a big in- internet mystery if it had one to be honest um but man this was like something that someone put time and effort into yeah for what reason how far does it go we'll never know but right what's the end goal did it end before it could finish kind of thing and before we close fully i want to talk about some of the smaller theories that do come up when you search this topic as we lightly mentioned before there's the arg angle which again there's nothing that's been solved and no concrete checkpoints have been discovered yeah. along the way. So that, that it's hard to say, but a lot of people do bring up number stations, which are uh, Cold War era radio broadcast signals that pump out number station. I don't know if you've uh, heard about that from uh, Black Ops, Call of Duty, but yes, very yeah, much real. we mentioned it in this podcast before. Yeah, oh, okay. Uh, very much real, very much still broadcasting. Um, a lot of theories there that kind of uh, mesh up with some of the theories attempted here. This could be a situation where, and and this actually makes a lot of sense to me, where someone was just trying to put a bunch of information on the internet to cover up some potentially bad publicity. So they were just trying to put out a bunch of misdirects to cover up any sort of search results that might be negative to their establishment. Again, timeline doesn't work out very well for that message, but 
Uh, and then the last kind of smaller theory is that regardless of this being the owner, regardless of whoever this might have been, it could be an unfortunate circumstance of someone who is stricken with a mental illness of some sort. And I say that with all seriousness, right? I, I don't want to speak yeah. of that lightly. Uh, this very well could be a situation like that. And if it is, it is certainly not something to joke about. But, you know, it, it does come up when you search this topic, and I'd be remiss again if I didn't mention it. But whether it would be dementia or otherwise, you know, everybody has access to the internet. And it is, a, it is an open door. It is a possibility at all times. So those are some of the smaller theories that do crop up that people discuss. But uh, but that's Captain Coochie's Key Lime Pies from the seafood <laughs> restaurant. Bada boom. Man, this was, this was a real thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's i don't know it, it it this just goes to show right this uh on this podcast we'd love to scratch the surface of mysteries we're very much the enthusiasts right we're very much the storytellers yeah. uh i i wish we had the time to be those investigative journalists that could really dive in and chase down leads and and maybe someday down the road uh you know we can start a red web docu-series or something like that and really get out there yeah this is like our little side passion project on yeah. top of uh you know the our main job right with uh with rooster teeth but um you know th th as i i just wanted to say that because i i recognize that this uh that this particular topic might have felt a little a little more aimless than than other topics but uh but that's the thing man sometimes mysteries are just about the story just about the journey and uh and this one's very much <laughs> this, a, a, uh, <laughs> this is a fun one <laughs> it's it's very much a fascinating just goofy one to talk about yeah. sometimes it's nice to change the pace on tone and uh, visit for the first time some of these uh, more lighthearted and uh, more spirited mysteries before we dive back into the uh, true crime and uh, missing persons and, and uh, monsters and ghosts and whatnot. But anyway, we've been Red Web. Fredo, I am so excited to see you next Monday for yet another mystery, and I will see you then. Yeah, boy. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye.